Get ready to feel old. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty just turned 20. Hideo Kojima's sequel to his massively successful, hugely innovative 1998 stealth action masterpiece was one of the most anticipated games of the era. Though the writer director has been all too keen to discuss his process and how the game finally got into our hands. From mind blowing metrics to cut characters, and some frankly insane decisions by Kojima, and so much you may not still be aware of 20 years later. And with that being said, I'm Ben Ray from WhatCulture.com, and this is 20 mind blowing things you didn't know about Metal Gear Solid 2 The Sons of Liberty. Number 20. The script was over 800 pages long. Now it's no secret that basically every game in the Metal Gear Solid franchise has an absolutely colossal script, given that Kojima's characters like to go on a bit and explain every aspect of what they're doing. Incredibly though, the second game expanded the scope tenfold it felt like, and resulted in a whopping 800 page script. Just to put this in perspective, that's around 7 times longer than the average Hollywood movie script, so you could easily picture Kojima using a briefcase to carry this thing around. Number 19. Kojima went to extreme lengths to hide the right and twist. Considering how basically every major video game is spoiled by leaks these days, it's fascinating to see such a large aspect of a video game not be spoiled, with the ride and twist being, well, unspoiled until launch. Kojima is admittedly an uncommonly cagey storyteller, and went to all time extreme lengths to hide this twist, by swapping out Snake in game trailers, and then putting him in the big shell sequences, giving us all the impression that we were going to play Snake in this game. And then beyond that, critics who reviewed this game were under such strict embargoes they couldn't give anything away, so when players got their hands on this one, they had no idea what was coming. Number 18. A mantis mask mechanic was scrapped during development. Kojima's games are always packed with wonderful, creative, out the box ideas and mechanics. And one that was infuriatingly cut from Metal Gear Solid 2 was the inclusion of a mantis mask. What would have been a nice callback to the telepathic boss from Metal Gear Solid 1? The mask would have let the player read the minds of anyone in the room which goes without saying would have been a highly eccentric and hilarious outcome for sure. I mean this is the franchise where we have guards crap themselves for god's sake. The original plan for this would be to unlock it during the second playthrough, and players could use this to learn the identity of Pliskin before the big reveal. Sadly it's never been publicly stated why this didn't make it into the game, though it probably just didn't make it in because it was too complex. The Mantis Mask is such an ingenious idea, and it's such a shame we never got it in another Metal Gear game. Number 17. Kojima originally wanted to call it Metal Gear Solid 3. In what might be one of the most Hideo Kojima decisions ever, he originally went to call the sequel to Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 3, as a reference to the skyscrapers in the New York skyline, and to also screw with the fans that are expecting Metal Gear Solid 2. Unsurprisingly, Kojima's suggestion was met with resistance, and so it was ditched for a more familiar title, and one that was less confusing. Number 16. It cost just 10 million dollars to make. Considering its high degree of polish and massive ambitions, it's extremely impressive that Metal Gear Solid 2 only cost 10 million. For comparison's sake, Final Fantasy IX cost a whopping 40 million the year prior, and 2015's Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain was an 80 million production. To deliver a game that well aged and masterfully engineered on a modest Hollywood horror budget is frankly staggering. Needless to say, this investment from Konami paid off. Number 15. The Tanker chapter had a different ending. The game's tanker prologue ends of Ocelot stealing Metal Gear Ray, and the tanker sinking, at which point Solid Snake is presumed dead by the outside world, but originally the level didn't end with a lengthy cutscene, but instead Snake trying to escape the tanker. The set piece reportedly had Snake running through the tanker while taking on guards, racing against the clock as water began to rush in. Those snippets of the sequence were used in cutscene flashbacks later on, and clips were also included in early trailers. Kojima allegedly scrapped this because it wasn't deemed fun enough. It's a damn shame because that sure sounded like a blast. Number 14. The game changed significantly due to 9-11. Countless movies, TV shows and video games changed a lot due to 9-11, and some were even cancelled. And with Metal Gear Solid 2 just two months away, Kojima and his team had to work fast to reconfigure aspects of the game. The New York finale was originally more elaborate and had Metal Gear Ray crashing into Manhattan. Elsewhere American flags were removed from the final boss battle against Solidus, and Raiden's name spelling was even changed in Japan. From Kata Kana to kanji characters because of the former being very similar to Bin Laden. All in all it's impressive that these changes were made in such little time, especially before the game went gold. This was before the era of day one patches after all. Number 13. The E3 reveal is widely credited for the PS2's success. Though it's no secret that this first gameplay demo blew people away, you might not appreciate just how widespread this truly was. The game's extremely high graphic fidelity and gameplay mechanics offered us such a strong advertisement for the PS2, which had already released in Japan but hadn't hit stores elsewhere just yet, and out of the gate the PS2 sold like hotcakes and sustained 
sustained this for the entire generation. It left the Xbox, GameCube, and Dreamcast in the dust, and many credit this to, well, Metal Gear Solid 2. Number 12. Vamp was originally supposed to be a woman. Though it's different to see Vamp in any other way, his character went through a lot of changes in pre-production, with Kojima originally envisioning him as a woman. But once Kojima came up with the character of Fortune, he felt the duo made more sense if they were both different genders, and so Vamp was made a man instead, and now it's hard imagining Vamp in pretty much any other light. Number 11. It almost had a cel-shaded art style. It's basically impossible to imagine Metal Gear Solid 2 looking any differently to it does now, but early in the game's development, Kojima toyed with a cel-shaded look. Konami have released a few clips over the years featuring Snake and Mei Lin looking cel-shaded, but that wasn't really the look that fit this game, and it's safe to say that Kojima was probably smart to stay the course, though we did end up releasing the Metal Gear spin-off with a cel-shaded look years later, the PSP game Metal Gear Acid 2. Given the historically diverse nature of cel-shading, especially with franchises that didn't start out that way, and given how basically timeless Metal Gear Solid 2's final art style was, everyone here made the right choice. Number 10. The game passes commentary on Japanese censorship. Though much of Metal Gear Solid 2 feels massively ahead of its time, as it tackled complex issues, it also took sly aims at aspects of Japanese society, which you probably missed. In the year 2000, when Kojima was working on the game, the Japanese government approved textbooks which downplayed Japan's role in World War II. This has been a major issue in Japan society ever since then. And then when these textbooks were put out there in 2000, Kojima felt he had to comment upon this in his new game. And so he did in the final cutscene. We need to pass the torch and let our children read our sad messy history by its light. We have all the magic of a digital age to do this with and ultimately these textbooks were eventually scrapped in almost all of the school districts. Number 9. Jack and Rose's dialogue was inspired by Kojima's own marriage. Hideo Kojima sure does love movies, so it's no secret that Raiden slash Jack and his partner Rose are inspired by James Cameron's Titanic, yet the actual beat to beat dialogue is informed by something else entirely, Kojima's relationship with his wife. According to Kojima, when Rose asks Jack what day it is, and he forgets the anniversary of their first meeting, it's intended to mirror Kojima's own forgetfulness while dating his wife. Who would similarly ask the same question to prompt his own memory? This is one strange but yet sweet tribute. Number 8. Two planned bosses were cut from the game. The game originally featured two more bosses against Dead Cell, the questionable moniker of Chinaman and Old Boy, who are actually mentioned in the final game. The former was apparently modelled after Jet Li, and would have been a martial artist with the ability to walk on water and walls. His boss fight was set to take place in the same chamber that you fought Vamp the first time. As for Old Boy, he was meant to be a mutant World War veteran, who was over 100 years of age, and was a mentor to Big Boss. His fight would have involved sending in a fleet of paratroopers to fight Raiden, but ultimately the Old Boy concept was scrapped for the end in Metal Gear Solid 3. Number 7. Raiden was created to make the game more appealing to women. The game's big protagonist switcheroo, of course, rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but beyond Kojima wanted to troll his fan base by swapping out Snake for Raiden, he also did it for a more earnest reason. Kojima claims that he created Raiden after hearing female debuggers, who worked on the original Metal Gear Solid noting that it didn't do much for them, and so his solution was to give them a more accessible hero, and comparing Raiden to Solid Snake, it was meant to be a bit less standoffish. Despite the obvious controversies over Raiden, it didn't hurt the game's sales in any way. Number 6. Pliskin originally had blonde hair. Supporting character Pliskin is eventually revealed to be a lot more important, and none other than Solid Snake in disguise. And obviously Kojima didn't make much of an effort to conceal this, and as players we all pretty much knew who it was from the get-go. However, Kojima's original plan was to give Pliskin blonde hair, so it would leave players more unsure if it was Solid Snake or maybe even Liquid. But Kojima decided to drop this one as the look was a bit too distracting. While it would have been another layer of mystery and tension in the game, Metal Gear Solid 2 was also juggling too much else at the time, so it was deemed a bit unnecessary. Number 5. It predicted fake news and other modern phenomenon. It's wild to go back to Metal Gear Solid 2 now and just see how much it was predicting back then. Sure a lot of these things aren't one to one but it seemed to get some social trends right and upon release this game was considered to be a bit out there. But in recent years it's been strangely precise with some aspects of life. What with the intrusive nature of technology in our lives and the very notion of fake news. During Raiden's late game chat with the Colonel, it's so strange how he was so accurate about misinformation in the internet age or algorithms exploiting the human nature wherever it be for hate or for joy. Now this isn't to say that Kojima's an oracle, but sometimes this was a bit on the nose.
those. So bravo for predicting how twisted our future would really be. Number 4. A multiplayer mode was scrapped. Though more recent Metal Gear games have featured an online multiplayer mode, Kojima originally planned for Metal Gear Solid 2 to feature a local two-player versus mode, chief for either split screen or console to console system link. The modes would have had straight up battles between two players or a stealthy hide and seek mode, though unfortunately this was eventually just scrapped. But hide and seek multiplayer rather than deathmatch in Metal Gear would be kind of fun. Number 3. It was originally about solid hunting liquid in the Middle East. Though the final game is set in New York, Kojima originally intended to sell it in the Middle East, with Liquid somehow surviving the events of the first game. Liquid would again commandeer some more nukes and prepare to launch them with a new Metal Gear. But roughly six months into development, the plan was dropped, what with tensions growing in the Middle East. Kojima would rework some of these ideas for the Tanker Prologue instead, whilst totally reconfiguring the Big Shell portion of the game. Kojima of course finally went to the Middle East with a fourth game, though presumably for political reasons they don't say where it is. But then Metal Gear Solid 5 however takes place in Afghanistan, so he finally got there in the end. Number 2. Vamp is hidden in the ending cutscene. Despite defeating Vamp in the game, he obviously lives to fight another day, and makes a sneaky reappearance as an easter egg in the final cutscene. After Raiden removes his dog tank, you can manipulate the camera and zoom in to find him. Kino players will spot Vamp hanging around a taxi in the background, just for a few seconds. Seemingly watching Snake and Raiden having their little moment without their knowledge. Better yet, you'll even pop a trophy! Vampire. And as for Vamp, he would return years later in Metal Gear Solid 4, where you'd finally get to fight him one more time. And number one, Raiden's journey was inspired by Pinocchio. And if you're wondering what Pinocchio has to do with a giant mech which shoots nukes, well, let me tell you. A lot of Kojima games are inspired by movies, but the bulk of Raiden's character arc is actually influenced by Pinocchio. In a recent tweet, Kojima confirms that Raiden's journey follows that of Pinocchio in a metaphorical way. And really, nobody can put it better himself. Raiden, swallowed by a huge white whale of information society is digested through the stomach and vomited through the anus. After that, his puppet of information control cuts the strings and starts to walk on its own legs. That's MGS2. I mean, Raiden does spend a large part of the game's final act in Arsenal gear, where many areas are named after human body parts, namely Ascendant the Colon, Sigmund Colon, and Rectum. Never change your Deo, you're an absolute madman. And that's our list, that's 20 mind-blowing things you didn't know about Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Did we miss any major facts? Let us know down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And while you're down there, go and follow us at W Culture Gaming and follow me at Ben Roy Turner. And on Instagram as well, why not? Anyway, until next time, never be game over.